Hello, and welcome to Straight from the Cockpit. Uh, this is a special edition. We are uh, going over um, uh, going over our maintenance uh, incident that occurred during flight, and uh, we uh, troubleshot and. Uh, we will have video going over what uh, actually transpired. We have a C-130 landing right now, so it's going to be a little noisy. So. As I was saying, uh, we had a uh, we had a transmission oil pressure low indication that came uh, came on during flight. Uh, that's a land as soon as possible uh, uh, caution light. One thing about it, yeah, uh, flying over islands, sometimes you can't land as soon as possible because you're over the ocean. Uh, and that's exactly what happened uh, with me. I, I was flying along, got the light, I was over water. Obviously there's nowhere to land, so we had to continue to, uh, had to, continue to fly. And, uh, and, uh, And once again, we have the C-130 that's got the taxi right next to us. So it's going to be very noisy here for a second. And I'll just keep rolling let you enjoy the, the sight that we get to see quite often here. States Marines uh, probably picking up some supplies or something here uh, doing their thing but as I was saying we had a we had a uh, transmission low oil pressure uh, indication that uh, came on during flight and uh, I was flying over water so I couldn't land as soon as I couldn't land as soon as possible because there was nowhere to land so I had to continue flying and I think back to when I was in flight training many years ago, uh, uh, back in 2000. So that's, uh, oh my God, 18 years ago. Uh, but I, I, I remember my instructor uh, used to always say that the difference between a pilot and an aviator, a pilot, yeah, he's good flying, good on the stick. But an aviator, they actually know what they're doing while they're flying in the sky and when things go wrong. And uh, I remember to stay calm, uh, assess the situation. Uh, in, that, in that case, uh, I was over water uh, and uh, I couldn't land, but I had to land as soon as possible. So I had to analyze and think of what could go wrong further in that situation so uh, with a transmission or low pressure just going through and knowing the system you would know that uh, uh, and, and I also check the indicator as, as as well in the cockpit you check that you, you the uh, checklist says uh, confirm you know by looking at your gauge in the cockpit which I did it went to zero uh, initially it went to zero uh, I mean, uh, initially it just dropped down to like 10 PSI. Normal operating range is uh, uh, 45 PSI. That's where it should be, plus or minus uh, 5 PSI. So, um, so initially it dropped down to 
uh, 10 psi on the indicator I had uh, the the low pressure light the low transmission or pressure light and just thinking in my mind okay what's happening right now do I have a do I have an oil leak or did I have a pump failure or am I having a transmission failure mechanically so you have to think of that assess everything that's happening and uh, you know continue to fly the aircraft because at the end of the day you got to get to the ground safely uh, so you can't panic uh, so I remained calm assessed the situation thought through my mind and said okay I have low 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 transmission oil pressure so I immediately think if there's if if it is a leak if I have a transmission oil leak then I should be on standby to get a uh, transmission oil high temp light should be coming very quickly because those parts are moving very fast and if there's no oil in there it's going to heat up really quick uh, so uh, and I was over water I had about I had about three minutes to land I could actually see the land uh, uh, so I I, I I was I was calm and okay I, I had plenty of altitude I was at uh, I was at like uh, uh, around a thousand feet coming I was coming down anyway because I was getting ready to land and uh, I was coming down in altitude I had about uh, 90 knots uh, airspeed so I was okay if I needed to auto rotate or anything like that if I if, if, if the situation really got dire but just continue to dissect I continued to fly I started the clock to uh, watch the time to see uh, how long it would be before I got a high oil temp light just in case uh, that I actually have an oil leak um, and approximately when I was getting ready to I was, I was on final approach probably probably about a mile half a mile in on final approach I got the high I got the transmission oil high temp light uh, which told me that I didn't have an oil leak I probably had a pump failure that was my initial assessment was transmission oil pump failed it's not pumping the oil is just sitting and it's just getting hot uh, so uh, so at that point uh, my next anticipation was if if I had a oil temp high light a transmission oil high temp light and uh, the transmission oil low pressure light and the next light that I should be concerned about would be a transmission chip light uh, which would mean that the transmission is coming apart that means that there's a severe failure inside the transmission itself and the transmission is coming apart and I am in that would mean I'm in really a dire situation and no matter what I need to land even if it's in water uh, but uh, that never that never that never happened uh, the transmission oil temp light did come on like I said it was only on for about about a minute before I uh, was on the ground landed safely uh, I got on the ground landed and then uh, uh, so we started to dissect the problem just to see just initial uh, check of when you uh, shut down you do you do your walk around I checked the transmission for leaks there was no leaks all level was good um, we had no chip lights we checked the, the chips chip detectors uh, so then I uh, just begin the troubleshooting uh, we checked we took apart the T valve because I noticed once before I saw this light before I, I just tapped that valve because uh, I got that light once before and just an idle which which is fine if you have it at idle you, you can sometimes get the light but I, I I checked it and and the light went away so we immediately went to that valve uh, uh, not valve it was a T T fitting and uh, and I'll show it to you and uh, I have the videos so I'm gonna put the videos together so that you can follow the troubleshooting because I noticed uh, when we were troubleshooting it, it really gave us a, a, a little bit of heartache because uh, you know we were following the flow chart of the troubleshooting flow chart and uh, everything was checking out and we were still having low oil pressure and then I looked online and come to find out 
<laughs> a lot of people have had this problem and you know trying to troubleshoot and find what the issue was and it was it was pretty difficult it was a tedious uh troubleshooting but uh but ultimately we uh just to walk you through what we did and like i said the videos will follow and you will see uh, i'll show you when i ran up and i'll show you the low oil pressure light show you the the low pressure indication uh show you what we did in troubleshooting and everything i'm talking about now it will actually be in the videos and then you can follow along and actually see what's what's happening uh so like i said uh once i got on the ground did my ground my uh post flight check check everything out everything visually looked good check check everything related to the transmission everything all the connections free will unit everything just just really visually check everything to make sure everything was okay everything visually was fine so uh like i said we took the the t fitting out first checked it no problem uh cleaned it reinstalled it start the aircraft up again same indication uh transmission low oil pressure it never would get up to pressure uh we would only get uh, around 10 psi uh, the max we ever got throughout all the troubleshooting the max we ever got before we got it fixed was uh 15 psi so alrighty so after we clean and check the uh t fitting um and put it back in and start it up again and it still did not uh reach pressure uh we decided to uh, change the uh, change the oil and the oil filter so we we removed the the oil filter and the uh, the oil filter assembly cleaned it uh, put in a new filter uh, check to make sure there was no obstructions or anything reinstalled it torqued it do it again so I can show him that it torqued Okay. Okay. Uh, started it back up again. Same thing. No, uh, could not get up to pressure. Uh, it it was still at, still at around 10 psi. Oh, one thing to mention also. Uh, I did at one point during the flight uh, when I got the uh, initial low pressure transmission or low pressure and the transmission oil high temp light i also noted that the indication actually went to zero psi uh, for about 20 seconds i had it, it indicated zero pressure to the uh to the transmission and at that point i thought i literally thought i had a leak and um that i had you know all the oil had leaked out of the system and uh, I, I was really anticipating that I was going to have a chip light any second. But I never got that. And like I said, once I got on the ground, there was no leak. So continuing on, when we, when we drained, one, one thing that happened while we, were, while we were changing the transmission oil and the oil filter, uh, when we drain, you, you remove the chip detector on the, front side, on the front right side to drain the oil out. Um, the oil initially would not come out of the transmission. Now, I had never seen that before, and, and it, it was kind of an anomaly to me. Uh, so I, I was a little shocked by that, that soon as that, typically when you take that chip detector out, that oil is flowing right out behind it. Uh, but that didn't happen. I mean, it was like just barely dripping out, and the, the transmission uh, case was, was full of oil. We could look at it on the indicator. On, in the sight glass and it was showing still full of oil uh, on the on the on the oil level line so uh, so then we were initially was like man I, I never seen anything like that we you know put the chip detector in and out try to see if it would you know make the oil come out turns out the the oil screen was was a little dirty we removed the oil screen clean it all started coming out so if you ever encounter that check your screen check check the screen and uh, it's probably dirty, and that's what's keeping the oil from draining out. So that's just that's just a uh, that's just a uh, side note there. That wasn't the cause. That wasn't the issue. So anyway, we we 
drain the oil, change the oil filter, check the chip detectors, clean those, put the, uh, we checked to make sure there, there, there was no uh, medical particles or anything like that building up on them, which it wasn't. Uh, reinstall those, reinstall the uh, uh, transmission oil uh, filter case with a new filter inside, torqued it, then uh, refilled it with uh, transmission oil, and uh, started it up again. Same problem. Uh, still was reading low oil pressure, was still only about 10 psi. So then we uh, uh, continuing on with the flow chart. It tells you to check. Um, uh, I don't have it in front of me, so definitely refer to the maintenance manual and uh, troubleshooting manual. But uh, we went on to check uh, the oil cooler. Uh, no, before the oil cooler, uh, yes, that's correct. We went to check the oil cooler. No, we went to check the oil pump. Now, you can check the oil pump by, according to the flow chart, you, you check, you initially check, um, you should check the oil pump to see if it's, if it's, if it's, uh, if there's a problem with the oil pump. So you can remove the hydraulic assembly, the hydraulic pump assembly, and then remove the, uh, transmission oil pump rather than going through all that there's also a, a field way of kind of checking it if you if you don't have all the necessary tools and the ability to remove all that stuff and check that so what we did was we did this we disconnected the line at the indicator itself to check to see if we were actually getting oil flow through the system to the indicator which subsequently could also trigger the light so what we did is you, you take a you take a, a plastic bag plastic ziploc bag you disconnect the line inside the cockpit you wrap it up with the uh, plastic bag it's disconnected from the indicator at this point so then you start up the aircraft just go into idle because you just want to see if it actually pumps and if it's actually pumping hard. Uh, and it was. Uh, I mean, oil was pumping out of there just like it should should have been. So we knew that the, the transmission oil pump was actually functioning. So it had to be something. Else. So we reinstalled the. Uh, we, re we reconnected the uh, oil pressure line to the indicator itself and uh, continued troubleshooting. And when we did that, still, once again, it was you know, still low pressure. Now, I will say the indication did go up a little bit. That's when we kind of got peaked out at around 15 PSI. Uh, we did notice a little slowage in the line, so we, we went ahead and uh, purged the lines again. For, uh, transmission uh, oil after purging the lines and cleaning the lines to make sure that, that wasn't a cause uh, then we went on to the transmission oil cooler and then when we were disconnecting everything from the oil cooler as you will see in the video we came across a lot of debris was actually inside the oil cooler uh, ducting that you know for where the airflow goes so I mean it was a tremendous amount I mean it was basically cloth which to me initially I thought oh man this is our problem then I thought through it a little bit more and I said no that would that would create a high temp situation because of the airway is clogged and it's not able to cool the oil but we wasn't getting a high temp light until like very last second after you know we had had the transmission low pressure light for for quite you know some time 
So uh, we went ahead and cleaned that. We, we, we went ahead and, and removed the uh, air cooler itself, cleaned out all that gunky debris from the duct. What it was was the duct had rusted on the inside and it had just basically broken down over time and it's just been collecting in there and it clogged up. So uh, we, we removed it, uh, cleaned it, reinstalled it, um, uh, ordered new ducts to replace that so, so we don't have a, re a repeat of, of, of that buildup um, that will potentially lead to a high transmission oil temp light. Uh, so, so that turns out uh, that wasn't the issue and again in the video you will see and I'll explain it to you in the video. Okay, so uh, we had a low pressure, low transmission oil pressure and this is our problem here. It's right here going inside the transmission oil cooler from the duct. Uh, all the trash from the duct itself has collected inside the oil cooler in the, uh, in the oil cooler air duct. So we're gonna remove it, clean it, and see if that uh, removes our low oil pressure problem, which I'm about 99% sure it will. So continuing on what we were saying with the transmission oil cooler uh, ducting you can see here it it has rusted on the inside placing this duct will take care of that indication that we have been getting in the cockpit uh, we were getting a low oil pressure low transmission oil pressure uh, after about 20 minutes in flight we would lose oil pressure altogether uh, land as soon as possible is the proper uh, emergency procedure. Uh, we were over water, so we couldn't land. Had to continue on to the airport, approximately seven minutes, and then we got uh, transmission oil high temp light uh, in combination with the low transmission oil low pressure. Uh, we troubleshot, uh, we change the oil, we drain the oil, change the oil, and the oil filter. Uh, we also uh, remove the chip detectors, clean those, put those no, back. No, no. Uh, ran it several times, never could get the uh, transmission oil low pressure light to extinguish. Um, never got the high temp light because it takes a while for the transmission oil to get uh, extremely hot. So we never got that light to come back again, but the transmission low pressure uh, light was always continuous, uh, illuminated from flight idle all the way to 100%. It never went off. Uh, but uh, that turns out that wasn't the, the issue either so we were really scratching our head and then the final step was to the final thing in the flowchart was to check the transmission uh, all jets one and two uh, so we went ahead and started to remove them we, we removed all jet number two uh, first and uh, it was clean, no issues, replaced the packings and everything, put it back in, reinstalled it. And then we got to the number one uh, oil jet, and then uh, we were uh, taking it, trying to get it out, and it was a little bit difficult. We actually, you know, it's got a little sealer on it. We we broke the seal and everything, and it, it just would not, you know, it was giving us a little bit of a hard time to pull it out. And finally, we, we got it pulled out, and sure enough, that oil jet was complete, uh, I, I wouldn't say complete, I'd say it was probably 80% obstructed. I mean, it just was, it had so much gunk or, I, I don't even know what it was, but it was just completely clogged, almost. Uh, like I said, about 80%, and, and, and again, I show you this in the video, I 
we pull it out before we clean it and, and we show you exactly what it was that that was clogging it up jet number one and this is what we found so this could be also a and uh we reinstalled it uh reinstalled number one and number two uh transmission oil jets torqued them safety wired them replaced the packings and everything and uh hopped in started it up and sure enough all pressure was back to normal uh, so that's that was the flow of the uh the transmission oil pressure low oil pressure caution light uh, for the Bell 206 B3 so I hope this was helpful to anyone out there that may run into this issue or have that light uh, I hope this was informative for you and uh, give you some insight and can help you if you're troubleshooting so that's that's why we're making this video so uh, uh, and this is sponsored by Redtail Aviation uh, Best Aviation, Helicopter 2, um, those are all my companies around the world in the U.S. and the Philippines and China uh, and in Cambodia. So, uh, so hopefully all this was informative to you. Hopefully you enjoyed this and uh, it's great information. Feel free to uh, send me messages uh, or comments in the... Uh, comment section about it if it's helpful and uh, helped you out uh, and thank you and always safe travels from straight from the cockpit i'm your host captain berman blaze mcgee